Um, thanks all for being here tonight. I'm really excited to read. Um, I am going to be reading a few poems from New Life, um, sadly from a PDF, I'm traveling right now. Um, but then I'll read some new work and I'm, I'm excited for the you know thrill of reading new work. Um, so New Life is a book that's sort of uh, a, a, about pregnancy and horror movies and islands. Um, those things all seem to go together in my thinking as I was writing this book a few years ago. Um, and so I think th that's kind of like all you need to know. Um, and yeah, I'll just dive in. I'm so, I'm so bad at pre-poem small talk, so I'll just give you the poems. Um, okay, so this one is called Coal. Oh, I guess the only thing you need to know is a number of these poems are sort of addressed to like an unborn child that is certainly not my son, but was sort of like my conception of what, or who or what a son could be, um, which wasn't necessarily, is very far from the person that is in my life now. Um, okay, so Cole. My husband has land in a lake north of the cities, which means I have land, so do you. Sears cabin, boat access, outhouse, darling, coyotes, stumps, not my style island. From his mother, he has sensibility, toe to tile, standing still, an outlook. He sights the high point in every valley and holds his ground, thighs, thighs. He is fond of red discipline and programs, parks found in the back of the atlas. How little he quavers. Since he was a teenager, his mother has dreamed of teeth being pulled from her mouth. Incisors, atonement, alcohol leached from his cells. Now it's his turn. Crumble, pulverize, mouthwash, floss, life, in, life jacket for infancy. No season for nervousness, no sand on this shore, twigs and ash and graham crackers. Someday I too will own omens, the onslaught of extraction, a sadness. I don't know how to handle these pronouns. His son, my property, boy, cake, candle. Every year our island needs maintenance. Love is a sheath, here's a thicket. This next poem is called The Viewing Room. Toast and peanut butter, THC, maple syrup, brown glass species, with a single direction, past. He avails a knee to J, options are the grinder. Lover, vassal, father, he spreads his legs, drives for fries with MG. He body surfs in Tibet, in Auckland breaks a rib and lies in the bed of a pickup with a girl, a gun, Godzilla rolls, brushes, a mustache, sires five, let's pretend childs. And friends like him high, get him drunk, Patron beaches, stoned lies, each peripatia prefaced. Once the baby is born, how will he want to? He has a scar on his chin, is not prone to hysterics, but in August he fights to drive off a cliff and cabinets unlock for him, amulets, mint, and he hides desire, a rope he tugs. He tests like a bell, it chimes. Resurrection. Ascension is off menu, but abstention, I'll have her biblical nose. Deny every burnt scoop on Ile St. Louis. Starve the tourists, my shot. See them so happy to slice lamb, butter bread, buy off children with baskets. Me, I take lunch by the pool, crushed by a bad sun. All morning, girls hawk huevos, selling plastic shells. Call this Easter lemonade. An inklet makes every calf candy. Yes, even yours, little boy. Turquoise cuff, Cheerio beads, pearl choker, googly brooch, the loop de loo rosary comes to a sequined cross. I can't unsex the crucifix. I won't. 
Your penis is pacifier, mushroom, plush. Oh, hush, unblush yourself. We're family now. Palettes develop, organs descend. Holidays matter little, save brunch. I think I'll read two more from New Life. Freedom. Freedom becomes a man driving 400 miles to lock himself in his cabin, in his pines, on his island, off his lake, to give in to himself, to his head, while his boys canoe the bull, the bud. In the meantime, Southwile, a city called school, teaches me this is your body off limits. This is how to curb, how to cut Fridays, alcoholic as lemons in heat. And then the last poem I'll read from New Life is uh, a Sestina. Um, and for those of you who don't know, a Sestina is a seven stanza poem where um, there are six end words that repeat again and again and again um, in, a, in a specific pattern. So you'll hear this kind of um, woven repetition. And the Sestina is called Shower. On eye and ear, the years stream fairly forward, cardinal and stubborn. Another season, the branch jay watches through the picture window, eyeing death in the kitchen. A bowl of cream whipped and souring, chocolate too black for the honored guest. The table is toy clear, but everyone still hears the mobile. Its lullaby moves slow as molecules mobilizing a whisper. The animals hang from weak flowers, four stems, red and blue, yellow, orange, strewn on the table. Here a dolphin and a tiger, there a lion and a branchlet-legged giraffe, even a corpulent whale. Why must I sour the song? The windup still works, but I like to die. If I could relive time, would I try my first death asleep inside my mother? I was crab fed and mobbed by friends, champagne corks shot and smelling of sourdough. Years of Polish processed cheese, processed cheese, christened, forewarned. Winter will break everything in sight, ice the branches off dreaming magnolias. Only booties on the table, gown knit of bitter pearls, a bonnet's strung satin. Tableau called joy to Shiwad's ghost basement's dearth of consequences. Shift splice split, babies branching, breaking myself. Fatigue of ennui, this month's mobility mock. To the nipple kiss, compression waste forwardness of posing with grandmoms and aunties, sisters souring sex for eternity. Yet the chickadees chirp their sorry crib song. A wooden pull along seal toddles on the table. The favors and toll. I can use this at home going forward. One has to practice softening without softening to death. I touch the things I touched before and time immobilizes. From mother to morning, we gather pussy willow branches and bouquet the day. On lips and nose, the boy branches off into tomorrow. Sterile bottles, talcum onesies, soured madness of milk, and I don't want this mucking the mobile, barring the beat up Brahms. No, I can't, I won't. I won't be tabled and tasked, but sly, slightening, slipping off, death thin, tippled, charmed. Haven't I calendared forth for years? The decades branchy and weird, a cabinet of tabletop cakes and pincers, and sweetheart, I refuse to be soured. I flick the mobile and pray for naps, perfect my little deaths. All right. And so I'd like to read um, a new poem. Um, it's a little long. Oh, did I, did I get muted again? How long was I muted? About one second. Okay, great. Okay, great. Um, so yes, I have a new poem. Um, I've been, I've been doing a lot of writing about art for the last couple of years. Um, and this, this is um, a piece that I wrote after 
trying to attend a, a gallery exhibit online and kind of thinking about the paradox of basically walking through a, a gallery in a, in a virtual way. Um, so for context, well, the poem will give you context about the artist. So I'll just read the poem. Um, the hand's fist to grip the root. Last week, Ginny made me plant a garden. She asked her adult daughter to sketch a plan. Ginny has Duchess bearing and an accent, Texas and New Zealand. I said asked when Ginny demanded, cordially. Her daughter is a non-binary former studio art major who babysits my son. Before the pandemic, my husband and I would sit under the ficus tree in Ginny's backyard on Bonsayo. She'd show us a mess of magenta, brugmansia, or a lone rosebud opening creamy pink and give us her lemon trees lemons, tumorous knobby fruit, green spread over the rind. Tonight I'm looking at Simone Forte's Another Pretty Autumn on my phone with a glass of dry secco. At Ginny's house, there was always wine, a dual zoned beverage fridge stocked by the Wall Street Journal Wine Club. When Ginny visited, she filled our fridge with her wine. I'm a bad influence, she said to me. Only four glasses, please, mom, Ginny's daughter asked. I'm trying to stay in Simone Forte's solo exhibition. No time for husbands. What did I know of gardening before last Monday? Simone Forte weeds wearing a watch, gray hair in her face, face to the ground. She's in Vermont, filmed from underneath by Jason Underhill. For people moving through the gallery, the Box Gallery on Traction in the Arts District, east of downtown Los Angeles, the videos of Simone Forte weeding were projected on the wall, and maybe there was a map to indicate whether you were seeing real from weeding, Steve and Lisa's Garden 1, or weeding, Steve and Lisa's Garden 2. Maybe the map explained the double truth of weeding. Do Steve and Lisa have one garden Simone weeded twice? Do Steve and Lisa have two gardens? Did Simone weed once and tell Underhill to break the weeding session over two tapes? This curious 0.0% ABV sipper in her in-laws Minnesota kitchen wants to know. For her, the videos are photographed stills. Forte's knuckly hands yanking up green. It's very meditative, Ginny said as I spread the mulch. You'll just go out there and pluck. The press release says the videos are projected on three walls. I click through 24 stills for evidence. A shot of the gallery shows the body of the exhibition, the way these pieces coexist. Ginny says we want trees, dwarf, ornamental, of different height, to embower the butterfly bush she calls by its latinate. So I see Forte in a sun-smeared field of wildflowers on the wall between sheets of silk hung on a dowel parallel to the ceiling. Is this gallery a garden? Gong hung like a wind chime or a symbol or a giant CD. Printed on the silk is a poem called The Skin of My Teeth, Forte's composition from 2018. I think it's weird you can't zoom in on the photo of the silk sheets and read the text, and also weird that the press release doesn't quote the poem, or any poets, when Seamus Haney's Digging is available, and Madbrook Farm in Vermont is basically adjacent to Emily Dickinson country. Speaking of the farm, is it Simone's or Steve and Lisa's, or a three-person plot like this poem has become, Ginny and Simone and me? Meditative is how the press release says Forty describes weeding. She likes tension and release, or playing tug of war with the earth. Butterfly bush, nine bark, echinacea, star magnolia. Ginny can come and name plants too, but a weed is always a weed. And other pretty autumn has a title like a weed, torn at the root. An other, another. There's a 13 page poem with that title. If I were in the gallery, could I read it? Why is the press release so coy with Simone's poems? At first I typed text a verse, but the press release is verbose. I'm not here to cut down that writer so much as to say Forte's work in wood paired with the weeding videos recalls garden apparatuses. Seesaw from 1961 is a burnished gold plank leaned up against the wall with two smaller narrower boards positioned midways up like skis. You could set it over a pond and get yourself across with good balance. I think a poem is like a plank over a pond. How will I get from the stepping stones Ginny drops onto the mulch to that block? Forte's newfound work, a trapezoidal wooden platform, step stool, squat sawhorse, suspended from the ceiling, hovering over a wooden block. 
I feel so lost without object labels. When I'm looking, I like to read. The block, if I pinch and zoom, is honeycomb textured, or maybe my screen is dirty, or the image resolution is bad. There are tire marks on the gallery's brushed concrete floor. In another video still, you can see dirt caked in Forti's nail bod. She has full shapely fingers and almond shaped nails. Ginny garden and gloves I bought her. She'd pluck a leaf, study it, name it, throw it to the ground. Your mint's going to be a problem, she said. I told my husband to rent the tiller. I bought 15 bags of brown mulch. Now I've abandoned the garden for a long weekend and Ginny's daughter will be the one watering it. The herb garden, the sunflowers, the new hydrangea in the shade garden. Where did this creeping Jenny come from? This exhibition has stilled video, unreadable poetry, old leather ready to wear, jacket crumpled in a corner, a dancer's recorded movements on a black and white rooftop in 1970s New York, brown bags from Trader Joe's turned inside out, hiding the red Hawaiian flowers daubed with acrylics. In the gallery, I'd hear a recording of three people reading Forti's poem. At the counter, I hear water surging in the pipes and my son stirring upstairs. The work in the exhibition spans 60 years and many mediums, a pitch for life as art. First, you dig a hole, then you fill the hole with water, then you wait for the dirt to soak, then you take the plant from its nursery pot, then you uncoil the roots. Ginny says it's okay if they break, then you throw a little dry dirt in the hole, then you plant the plant, you snug dirt around it, mounding the dirt, tucking in the plant, you press your fingers like crimping a pie crust and make a moat around the plant, packing the dirt around the roots without suffocating them. Water it in. In Forti's Handbook in Motion, not mentioned in the exhibition notes, she writes, I'm mainly focusing on how movement and language very naturally work together in our everyday lives, in our cognition and communication. I'm improvising from that root behavior. Stop, I tell myself. At the box, there'd be none of this. Would the smell of mud be piped in? Would the swamp birds behind this house be chirping in the projection? Purple flowers, rampant lavender, a glass house, corn. Corn is a crop, I told my son, handing him play cool plastic from a 1984 barnyard set. We harvest words every day. Assemblage, Columbine. Thank you.